So back in September, we destroyed my house. And in doing so, I threw the dining table we had away because it was a piece of junk. And since then, we've had nowhere to eat meals. Obviously, this hasn't been working out well, so I need to build a dining table. So we're gonna do a breadboard end on this table, which means I have to do a little bit of math beforehand and pick out what I'm gonna do. We're gonna do six and a three quarter inch wide planks with six inch breadboards, seven foot long table, 40 inches wide. So I gotta pre-cut some stuff before we mill it. It'll save me material and time. Two things that equal money. There's no pencil there. All right, now that the top, uh, at least most of it, is in clamps and drying, we are gonna work on the metal part. What we've got here is a very complex drawing that I made to guide us through and get us to the promised land. We're gonna be taking this plate steel here, making the bottom, like a uh, angled socket part first. Uh, I'm gonna be TIG welding this whole thing together so it's beautiful and pristine because real pros TIG. And there's a lot of extreme angles on this, so I'm not gonna be able to hide the weld seam, so they need to look pretty. We'll get this top part done first and then we'll move on to welding up some chairs. I am cleaning the metal because like I said, we're gonna be TIG welding these with my Square Wave 200 TIG welder from Lincoln, the sponsor of today's build. And because Lincoln and I love you guys, they're running a promotion for $412 off the of Square Wave. If you want to weld like a pro, smash that link down in the description. Grab yourself one of these machines. Absolutely phenomenal. It's a machine I learned to weld on. It's a machine I teach to weld on. It's a machine I recommend to everyone who wants to TIG weld. Check it out. All right, so I got one of the chair sides welded up. I'm gonna use this as a template and then weld my other ones on top of it. That way everything is the exact same size and if any angles or anything are off from grinding, um, th that variance doesn't actually matter. That's one cool part about metal. You have a little leeway that you don't have with chairs and wood, wood chairs. build the legs for this project, um, we're gonna do something that's called a like, it's called a stickly style. Um, and essentially I glued up some blanks out of poplar on the edge grain. It's a little more stable. There won't be as much expansion and contraction. Um, and then we're gonna veneer the outsides. That'll give me continuous grain with no uh, difference in like side grain to end grain. It's how they get four-sided quarter saw and veneers on tables in the, in the stickly and craftsman style furniture. And it's also gonna be more stable and not move around a ton inside that socket. To do so, we need to resaw some white oak, which is a huge bitch, but 
Got to do it. Basically, I'm going to glue these up in two phases. And if you're confused about what in the hell I am doing, we're going to make cover it on four sides like that. And then put another, after these two sides dry, we'll plane it, thickness it, and then add these two. And what it'll do is essentially just create all similar surfaces and be much more stable chunk of wood. So what we've got here, I'm going to use tight bonds extended wood glue, just to give me a little bit more working time because I've got to get a lot of glue surface covered and I don't have a ton of time. I'm going to glue these up in a gang as well, just so I don't have 150 clamps out, only 50. We are working on the breadboard ends on this table and I'm doing them uh, in a more traditional style. What we've got going on here is I'm cutting the tenons. It's gonna be a haunched tenon and then I will cut a mortise slot in this board here. And uh, so what we're doing is establishing the shoulder with my track saw. You can use a circular saw if you do not have one of these or if you just like to uh, criticize people who do have them and you wanna use something that's harder, do whatever. We're gonna establish that shoulder and then we're gonna make a bunch of relief cuts knock those out and walk back the router in order to create our uh, our perfect dimensioned tenon and then i will cut them to the sizes that i want i think i watched a video youtube So we got the tusha pans all cut, jointed, flattened, awesomed. And to cut the actual shape in the pan, we're gonna use my CNC with a little help from my buddy, Jonathan Katz Moses. He has a phenomenal channel and a great dude. He helped me get all the cutting and tool paths done for this stuff. Uh, these should turn out pretty nice and all identical, which is what we're looking for. Now time for robot magic. As you saw, we got the chairs primed um, and those are all wrapped up. Only thing that we ran into was realizing that I made a design change on the fly when it came to insetting the seat pan and I changed it on the go and didn't actually think. And my chairs are just about two inches too short. They're like for little people and I'm not a little person. Came up with a pretty good idea. Being that we're socketing wood into metal around this whole project, Sam and I slash myself and no sleep 
came up with this concept. What we're going to do is create these little feet and we're going to plug the chair. Um, this will also be nice. I won't have to put plastic plugs in the, on these for them to not scuff my floor up. Um, and uh, I think it'll be a cool look overall with, uh, with how we're doing the table base. It'll reflect that slightly. Uh, so we're going to cut these little blocks here um, for all these inserts out of some bigger stock. We're going to pin the breadboards. We are going to get the base made and we're going to continue cutting seat pans on the CNC. Lots to do, but I feel like it's the home stretch. Sam, Sam says no. In order to cut the tenon for the pocket of the metal, I marked them out using a bevel gauge at 10 degrees. This is a marking knife. Then I measured it the whole way around. I will remove most of the waste with the router. That'll give me a nice shoulder. And then I will come back and clean it up with my hand planes to make it fit tight. Well, my children, we've run into a bit of a snag and it's more just a limitation on my skill set. Sometimes you just gotta know uh, when you suck. I cut all these mortises on the table legs in order to do integral tenons. I thought initially I wanted to do a through tenon, but because it's at this 10 degree angle, I am really, really struggling to make the fit perfect without ruining the wood. It's really fragile because it's the way I glued it up on the front and the back of the mortise here. So I think what I'm gonna do is if I just use my domino, I can uh, cut straight into both parts and I'll make it work with that. Um, all I gotta do is just plug the mortises I just made back up. When you suck, you suck. <laughs> I got a little block here. What I'm gonna do is give myself, yeah, with that angle, this will cut straight in and then that way everything fits straight instead of what'll happen is if I cut the angles first, the angles would be going opposite of each other, I think. Yeah, this angle would be facing up, this angle, they would have worked, but I would have been pushing like this in instead of these together. We're gonna be using the CA glue tape trick not invented by, but made famous by Mark Spagnuolo, the wood whisperer. Essentially, I'm just creating a spacer block and then I'll cut the tenons perfect dimension I want. Oh, that's not it. So we're gonna have to put it in loose. <laughs> Go figure, right?
So due to user error, mostly on my part, I'm struggling a little bit with the CNC tool pathing on the seat, so I'm gonna have to finish them by hand. To do so, we're gonna take an angle grinder, or the cut saw disc is what this is called, and I'm going to smooth them out, sand them down instead of just running them on the CNC. I've done a little bit of this before. I did a door for a project last summer on a lathe with the cut saw. They turned out really well. Um, awesome tool, power carving in general is awesome. If you guys are interested in doing anything like this, I'll have it linked down below. So wish me luck. Um, they're not gonna be perfect, but they're gonna be mine. So for the nature of this project, because it's a lot of parts and we only have a minimal glue up, we are going to pre-finish everything using Rubio. If you're not familiar with Rubio, shame on you. One of my favorite finishes, single coat application. Let's get to it. Thank you guys for checking out this build. This one was a blast. If you're interested in the $412 off promo on the Lincoln Square Wave TIG 200, I've got that link down below. Check that out. Appreciate Lincoln sponsoring this build and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Here we go.